In this video, we're going to be breaking down all things Shatterpoint from the Adepticon event last weekend, uh, taking everything from the AMG panel, breaking it down and giving you our thoughts on it. Hey guys, Rich from Rich Big Gaming. Hope everyone is doing fantastic. Welcome to this another Star Wars Shatterpoint video. And again, it's going to be another bumper edition where we're going to go through everything that was revealed and showed, uh, shown even during the AMG panel at Adepticon last weekend. We did the Marvel Crisis Protocol one. We wanted to do this earlier in the week. We just didn't get around to doing it. Um, and yes, it was a we. So joining me, I think I can say as always again now because he's back and this is the second one he's done with me. But but it is Mr. Quinn Duggan. Quinn, how the hell are you doing, sir? I mean, you're saying this like I intentionally left. It's just you <laughs> stopped making things. <laughs> I did stop making things, yeah, that is true. That is true. Um, yeah, so another another panel breakdown. Uh, this time this time Shatterpoint. Um, we won't be doing any, any of the breakdowns because uh, neither of us play Legion. Um, uh, what, what? Although, I think the Legion, like, they got some pretty decent stuff as well, did the Legion guys, I think, if you're I mean, a Legion we, we player. We can always, like, you know, cover the excellent presentation. Armada, that's the one I want to break down. <laughs> it's just our, it'll no, just be the intro. I think it's way funnier <laughs> to break down X-Wing, because there are still, like, thousands of people that play X-Wing. Yeah, they really are neglecting that game a little bit, aren't they, I think, but... How many spaceships could you do? Well, they're all yeah. the same. They fly about. They shoot things. I've never. I'll be honest with you. I've never played X Wing. Like I, I have I, played a handful of games of X Wing, and it is not for me. Yeah, I, I believe it's very, very like micro movement oriented. Is, is well, what well, I... the way it works is um you have like your movement dials that you put down at the start yeah. of each like turn, and then you like flip them face up in like pilot order turn. But, like, yeah. you can just fly off the board and just die. Nice. Which is not always fun. But space like, is infinite. How do, how does that happen? No, you get you, you left. Space is confined to our 3x3 three three board. It should yeah. be no bigger. <laughs> um, space Earth, is also yeah. entirely 2D. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I mean, it would be very difficult to do anything else, but could be quite interesting. Could be quite interesting. Um, so, Shatterpoint Queen. They showed us quite a bit. Um, we got a few cards. Um, n it felt like not many cards and a lot of new box reveals. I mean, but there's again, a reason why it doesn't feel like cards, right? And that's because we don't have stances. Exactly. Before, yeah, we've... We have like the equivalent of half a character several it's... times over. Yeah, and that's one of the things, isn't it? Like... Whereas with the MCP one, you know, okay, they, they didn't show us the reverse of some, but... Or, like, with certain the tactics cards, but, like... Yeah, still. but with the exception of a handful of characters in this game, there's usually not much difference. Like, everything stays the same, typically. Maybe with the exception of a stamina going up or down mm. by, by one or two. You know, there are some characters like Green Goblin and people like that who have very, very different cards on the reverse, but... For the most part, you can kind of guess, you know, you look at Shang-Chi and go, yeah, on his flip side, he, he might be a five stamina rather than a six or something like that. I but mean, you're, you, you're reverse it. The, the other way, yeah, but you know what yeah. I mean. But then with Shatterpoint, even though we've got the character cards, you they really mean nothing unless you see their, as you say, you see their stance card and you can have a look at their combat tree and... You know, where are their pushes in there? What conditions can they dish out? How many dice like, are they rolling? Characters can um, be entirely dependent on their combat trees as well. 100%. Because there are some characters that, without their combat trees, are absolutely dreadful. Yeah. Whereas well, there are at, some that, like, are less reliant on it, right? Well, look at, you know, look at some of the, you know, take Grievous, for example, right? I mean, yeah, he actually does a lot on his card, but, like, yeah. it's not until you see his combat tree and you go, oh, we can dish out a lot of damage. Uh, that's pretty good. <laughs> Vader's another one, right? Like, <laughs> a lot of damage very early well, I on. I always think of, like, Dooku, because Dooku without a combat tree is just, eh, I'm kind of hard to hit, that's it. Very slow, hard to hit, yeah. but that's it. And then you see his combat tree and you go, ah. It's like, oh, you're even harder to hit and you reposition <laughs> on one, so you're ridiculously mobile. And have a ranged attack, which is all, you know, it's always nice. Indeed. But let's start things off, Quinn. Let's start things off with some um, Star Wars Battlefront characters. 
Um, which it always, whenever I see this character or these characters from Battlefront on screen, it always gives me hope that one day, one day Cal will come to Shatterpoint. Because um, he's the Jedi we really want. But um, So it is Today the Rebellion Dies Squad Pack. So we've got uh, Commander Aiden Versio. Very, very standard pose, I would say, for her. Um, you've got the ID-10 Seeker droid with her as well, who, for anyone who's played the game, this, she's like the central character, isn't she, in the solo game that you play. Um, and spoiler alert, she doesn't end up being Galactic Empire at the end, I believe. I think she uh-huh. <laughs> switches allegiances. And then you've got the ISF, so the Imperial Special Forces. Um, and then what's the name of the... Is it Gideon... Uh, who's there's big, this, keith. big keith and little keith but there's the two guys isn't there that make yeah up, um, um there's the sniper guy and then the other one right yeah is it G- gideon hask no that's that's not wrong that's not right I is mean, it you're talking to a brick wall here i've not yeah. played that game <laughs> um but june 2024 but as i mentioned um we don't quite have the fully cleaned up cards that we had uh for um mcp but somebody in the crowd took some photos i don't know where they've come from i probably got hold of these like 12 hand um so i do apologize i can't credit the person that took them but if it was you and you know who you are let me know and i'll make sure you do get a credit in there but somebody in a much better position um did get some much much clearer pictures for us so, Quinn, starting off then, we have got Commander Aiden Versio. Uh, we obviously know she's going to be a primary. She's a 9-3, which feels pretty standard for a primary unit, kind of hu- regular human, no force ability primary. Um, it's, again, we don't know how much force she brings. We can assume four, uh, or, four or three. I'd, I'd go I three. would guess that she's an 8-3, right? You'd, I'd imagine, yeah, I'd imagine like that, she's that's an That's kind of like the benchmark, isn't it? And she doesn't yeah. feel particularly extraordinary or particularly like pulled back in terms of what she brings. Yeah, no, I would, I would agree with that. I would definitely agree with that. Um, so yeah, maybe, maybe an eight three, probably an eight three, but we'll see. So she's got an act. She's got a tactic ability, Quim. Today the rebellion dies at the start of the unit's activation. Each other allied galactic. Empire Scout character within range four that is not engaged that is not engaged may dash, then one character in this unit may dash. So G- Scout, I don't think they're on any of the other cards that we've seen so far because I don't I, think I don't they're on the Stormtrooper cards. Any are they? This is probably going to be for her unit, but then maybe if we do get Scout Troopers or something like that in the future. It, you know, it will work. Interesting that it is Galactic Empire Scout and it doesn't say that it has to be a particular type. So it's not a support unit and it's not a secondary unit. So that could be interesting. That could be her entire um, her entire squad moving, which... I mean, yeah, the fact that it's everyone with those tags within four is pretty... It's pretty good. Equally, there is the stipulation that they can't be engaged, which, you know, th- this tactic is going to fall off a lot towards the latter stages of the game, I yeah, think. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, but as a as an opening gambit, it reminds me very much of um, it, it's it's very Kalani, isn't it, in terms of like everyone within four that's got this yeah. this particular tag, they get to move, they get to move up. So, and she gets to move herself as well though, um, which is interesting. But I think she can move no matter whether or not she yeah, is... I don't think it's dependent on... Um, because once being again, engaged, yeah. Atomic Mass Games are an American company and therefore <laughs> don't understand the English language or the way it works. So, you know, we, we, we just end up having to guess as people yeah. that understand how this language works. So actually, you know, having all of that stuff earlier in the game, then potentially some characters that have been pushed off points and things coming back up is nice. But just guaranteeing that she gets that dash every turn. Because I don't think it's dependent on one of your other characters moving and she can do it engaged as well, is what I would assume. Um, I think that's quite good, actually, as a 
as a as a as a tactic ability. So yeah, there we go. She's got a lot of movement actually when I look at this. Yeah. Um cover operations. Each character in this unit may dash. If one or more characters end this movement within four of an enemy character, this unit immediately makes the focus action and characters in this unit have sharpshooter one until the end of the turn. So some more action economy there, which is always nice. How good is that sharpshooter? We have no idea because we can't see her combat tree. Um, but you would imagine it's going to be okay on her very, very ranged focus character, I'd imagine, Quinn. Um, yeah, like, I, I always find it interesting, like, kind of the balancing mechanic they use for characters with abilities like this, where they only have sharpshooter if they've used the ability. Like, you yeah. can't just stand focus and get the sharpshooter. You've got to spend that force to get that sharpshooter. Yeah, very, very interesting. And a reminder as well, you can't make multiple focus actions in a turn. So you couldn't do this to get the free action and then make another focus, could you, to generate another no. die. Um, so you have to do... It's usually then a hunker and a... And, a, and an attack, isn't it? Or a, or a move and an attack. But yeah, I mean, it's it's fine. Like that, you've got to be within four of an enemy character. Just means you've got to really choose what order you do things in, pre-measure it. Are you going to be within four after this? If not, um, then you maybe make your move first. Also worth noting that that enemy doesn't have to be in line of sight. So it, as long as you are within four of someone, they could be behind a wall or something like that. Doesn't need to be the target either. So doesn't need to be the target that you then shoot. shoot someone so, at range five. Assuming yeah, so, that Aiden has a range five gun, which I'd probably be pretty certain of. I'd be I'd be very surprised if it if it wasn't. Yeah. Um, so then got a second active ability, Quinn. ID10 Seekeroid. Again, it's going to cost a force. Choose an enemy unit within three. The chosen unit removes all its hunker tokens. If no hunker tokens were removed, the chosen unit gains expose. I like this either way. Like, this yeah, is just really good, good either way. Because you look at that first part and you go, okay, that is anti Galactic Republic, you know, anti clones, anti Obi Wan, but actually a force to just dish out and expose. Because um, clones really needed to be kicked while they're down, right? <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of anti-clone stuff, isn't there? Although they have just got the Bad Batch as well. So. I mean, yeah, but what one box like, for an entire <laughs> faction to work? Ugh. Yeah. And then her identity is going to be the Empire sends its regards. When an allied Galactic Empire character wounds an enemy unit with an attack... After the effect is resolved, that allied character may choose another unit within four. The chosen unit gains strain or disarm. Then the allied character may heal and dash. It will re recover and dash. Now, as per rules that we've seen before, even though it's and and not then, you will have to do the recover first and then make the dash. Even though there should be and then after that bit there, but hey, they do England good, Quinn, don't they? They do England, England good. Is city. Oh boy. Um, I I really like this, Quinn. That, because, that identity is incredible. Um, when you think about how many reactive things there are out there when one of your units becomes wounded, um, being able to put a strain on something like a Magna Guard, right? If they're with, you know, they're with Dooku or, you know, putting it on Mother Talzin so that she, you know, when she makes her dash and her attack and things, she's going to, you know, end up taking it. There's so many reactive abilities. And whilst a reactive uh, identity in, in itself doesn't trigger strain, what you do within that does yeah. trigger strain, doesn't it? So really, really like this. And then again, being able to give them give them disarm does have to be another allied uh, another enemy unit within four so you can't take out vader or maul and then slap the disarm token on them so that they <clears throat> you know they um are less potent hitting you back but even so i really really like this i mean with really... the other part of it they might not get to hit you back because you heal and run away well exactly and this will this will trigger before everything that they do because you're the primary, therefore... Sorry, you're the attacking character, therefore you get to resolve all of your stuff first. So, um, 
yeah, thoughts on, and obviously it, it's really only 50% of yeah. what she does, but thoughts on, on Aiden and what she brings to the Galactic Empire? Uh, I really, really like Aiden. I mean, I would... Well, I'm playing uh, Empire in like our current event that we're running, and um, like I was saying after the first like round because I'm playing Gideon Vader, I really wish I had another Empire primary to play <coughs> other than Gideon, because yeah. Gideon's decent, but like he feels very very passive. He makes things difficult for your opponent, but isn't particularly potent himself. I find, yeah. whereas. I always, as we know, like to be the aggressor. Um, exactly. And you like, prefer I, active versus reactive, yeah, don't you? I, as I well. prefer to be the one forcing the issue, not the one reacting to it. And yeah. I think Aiden is very much in the camp of, I am going to force issues on you. Deal with it. 100%. Yeah, 100%. I really like her. I think she's solid. I do hope we get head options because, and, and, and I know you get, we, we got head options with the clones and with some of the Mandos and things like that, my opinion has always been, why would anybody be going into battle without their helmet on? If they've got a special little helmet, why wouldn't they be wearing it? <laughs> but, Everyone um, should wear their mandatory safety silly hat. <laughs> <laughs> safety silly hat, yes. And then whilst we don't have any of her secondaries, we do get to take a quick look at the support units. Um, it's also important to mention there are two secondaries in that box, right? There are, there, 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 and they're the two that we mentioned, aren't yeah. there? Um, I think I had them in Legion, but I can't remember their names. Let us know down in the comments section below. Um, so they've got Special Forces Conditioning, Quinn. So they do have... These are the support, and they do have a, um, a tactic ability, which... We're seeing more and more now, right? Mm. There's, there's now sort of a good handful that have got this, but the start of this unit's activation, it may remove one damage and one condition from itself, um, which ain't bad. It, like it's how many, really good. Like, how many times have you been preserved. hampered? <laughs> like, like Now, important to know that it's the unit, so therefore it is one damage and one condition you don't get to do this for each of the two characters that are in this unit um because it would say each character may remove yada yada but even so just getting rid of like that that pin or the straight i mean any of them right getting rid of any yeah. condition for free is pretty darn good but the fact it's and so like you're not just choosing between the damage and the condition it's really nice as well like it, it it's better than what Vader does. <laughs> it is. And then if you think about um, some of the synergy with the other Empire characters, with the Stormtrooper Sergeant, for example, um, although I don't think the Stormtrooper Sergeant can move these, can he? Because they are not. They don't have the Stormtrooper tag. You don't need Stormtrooper tag. It's just you don't, is it just Galactic Sports. Empire? So yeah, the fact that they... Dark Troopers <clears throat> and stuff like that. Yeah. Now, the fact that they take a damage to get the focus, actually, I've just thought about it in my head, they probably don't need to, because what they want to do, Quinn, is get covert operations, so they get the focus and they get sharpshooter. Oh, I think you've conflated stormtroopers with the sergeant, because they, the actual supports take damage to focus. The oh, sergeant, is that what it is? The sergeant gets to some move. Advance. Ah, okay. I am getting confused there. This is the Empire player, not me. So, so actually, good synergy, and actually no crossover, which is which is even better. But covert operations, it's exactly the same as what we've just gone through. Um, which again, Quinn, I, I think is quite nice, especially when if they do have a pin, you can remove it so that you can make sure that you can do that move. Um, for covert operations, which is which is pretty good, but Quinn infiltration when deploying characters in this unit, characters may be placed within range three of the first place characters from the, that squad's primary unit instead of the normal one. Um, we've seen like Pons does a similar thing, right? Range um, two, but he does it to everyone in the squad. Yeah, but this obviously, you know, I said to you, didn't I? You said, oh, have you seen they can deploy from range three? And I said to you, I was like, oh, that's like represent their infiltration ability, is he? But you, that is literally what the ability <laughs> is called, Jess. I was like, oh, there we go. Um, range so, yeah, three is I mean, a long way. I mean, you are, what, you're timesing your typical deployment range by six with this ability. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, it's 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 huge, uh, absolutely huge, and makes for some very very interesting, especially when we get to this new pack and this map pack queen that we're going to go through. Some very very interesting turn zero stroke turn one players and where yeah, they can be on the me... board and what they can do. Especially in conjunction with Aiden's tactic as well, I do wonder whether you could put like one of each of these on like two of the midline objectives as like your first move. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. I think it it you know there, there are there are lots of other combinations that let you. And I will apologise by the way, guys. Somebody next door is putting scaffolding up, so if you can hear the drilling, I do apologise. But um, <clears throat> there's lots of combinations quite out that let you take four points. Um, during turn one, I think this makes it very, very easy to to do that. Yeah. Um, we don't know what they're going to be like defensively. Whether you want them that far up the board, um, but overall, Quinn is a support unit. Um, again, just from the card, they're an eight-two, which again is pretty standard for human support, dude. Um, you'd imagine they'll have some form of modified stormtrooper armor. Yeah, um, I mean. My my hope is that they have a very solid stance, um, because let's face it, they kind of need to be fours. Like if stormtroopers are a four, yeah. these guys need to be at least a four as well. And I think based off of that health pool, they are a four and not a five, right? Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting. Interesting to see. Um, <clears throat> oh, next up then, Quinn, we've got some of your favourites. General Solo and Emo Chewy, as he I mean, will forever like, be known. Of all the of all the rebellion things, like these are probably the bit where they get me, right? They are good, right? They are good. Um let's talk about the models. We didn't do it for the previous one, but I'm a little bit disappointed by both of these. <sighs> like you know, there's a Imperial Assault has a much better hand solo. Like Star Wars Legion I, I just, has a better. I just want to know what the hell is going on with Chewie's left arm. I don't know. I like, mean, they've they've really lent into quite bad. Like, he looks like a he looks like an infant Wookie in my mind. Like he he's does not look yet a bit fully like Dungy, doesn't he? Like do you know what I mean? Like he's not fully developed. Like look at his head. Like he doesn't. Compare, I mean, they're next to each other. Look at his face and his head on the sculpt, and then look at the artwork. Like, they, 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 they're not. Like, honestly, Chewie feels like one of the characters that should be like on a fifty mil as well, right? Yeah, like, absolutely. If Rekka and Aniga can go and be on a fifty mil together, like, you, Chewie, assumedly, is bigger than Rekka, right? He's a Wookiee. He's like seven foot tall. I think he's about eight foot tall. Isn't Maybe he? I mean, yeah, but he's I mean, like, Wrecker's I, I, like six six and a half foot. Is Wrecker, isn't he? Like, he's well, not that. I think Wrecker's about seven foot, like because he is pretty damn big. But like, still, I think Chewie outsizes him, right? Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Unless I don't know, they've done like a weird perspective thing, and he secretly is on a fifty mil, and he just looks small there. But like. I don't think that's what they're going for. No, I I don't. I really don't like this miniature. Like I, there hasn't I, been many in the game so far where I've gone. I might have to look for a third party sculpt because I think the sculpts in in Shatterpoint have been immense. Like they've they been are, really good. There are like three bad sculpts. Two of them are here, and then obviously yeah. you've got Bat Vader. Bat Vader, yeah. yeah. And that's more the cape than the overall... Cause I, it's I mean, just I don't Vader, like the pose right? of it either, because obviously it's meant to go alongside that Luke, but I feel yeah. like they have lost far more like dynamicism in making that decision than they've gained in terms of like cool factor of, oh, look, they are fighting. Like, yeah. So, not a big fan of the sculpt, but Quinn, 2024, uh, June 2024, they're coming out, so not long to wait. So, coming out alongside Aiden. So <clears throat> yeah, let's have a quick look at General Solo's card. So again, he's going to be another uh, primary. He's Rebel Alliance. He's a scoundrel and he's a scout. Um, so the scoundrel thing seems to be kind of where the bounty hunter thing is. What I thought would be bounty hunter seems to be leaning more into scoundrel. 
um, where that's kind of becoming its own faction. Um, well, it is like the scum and villainy, right? It is indeed. It is indeed. So he's got a tactical ability, to Quinn. When will then we'll do it real quiet like. At the start of this unit's activation, choose another Rebel Alliance character. If the chosen character's unit order card is in the order deck or reserve, each character in that chosen unit may advance. Otherwise, uh, they may dash. So basically, if you've used that char character already in their card, they only get to dash. If not, they get to make an advance. The important um, note, Han also goes with them. He does indeed, yeah. Which is very big for Han's like own maneuverability, right? Yep. Um, and the fact that you can you can choose one other character. It's not a character within X or whatever like that. Like you get to choose. So, you know, we haven't seen Chewie's card yet, but I imagine Chewie moving up with Solo is probably something that a lot of a lot of people do. Um, outnumbered, not outgunned. Quinn is going to be reactive ability, costing one. After a character in this unit makes an attack as part of a combat action, this unit may use this ability. One character in this unit may make a five dice attack targeting a different character in a different enemy unit. Um, we've seen it before. I, it's fine. It, it could be great. It could be terrible. We don't know because AMG don't give us stance cards when they reveal things. Nope, we haven't seen his stance card yet. Um, so like he could be just like Aura Singh and therefore <laughs> unplayable. <laughs> yeah, keep a little optimism here. I mean, that's quite apt. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like AMG knew what I was gonna say. Yeah. Um, when an allied unit is wounded by an enemy effect, after the effect is resolved, this unit may use this ability. If your opponent has more momentum than you, gain a momentum. This can be very good and can win struggles on your turn. And, I mean, just in general, like, this is really good. Like, I, I really like this. Um, I, I feel like that's kind of painting a target on Solo's back, right, of you want to wound him very quickly. Yeah, absolutely. But I think Chewie might have something to say about that when we uh, when we when we do. But then we've got hey, it is it's what me. he has to say. <laughs> worst two worst Chewbacca impressions hey, you guys. Could ever hear. <laughs> we sound more like Schloff from the Goonies, don't we? Um, hey, it's me is going to be his identity. Once per turn, when the enemy unit becomes wounded, after the effect is resolved, remove one condition from this unit then one character in this unit may dash once per turn when an allied unit is wounded by an enemy character after the effect is resolved one character in this unit may make a five dice attack targeting the enemy character that caused the effect so it's one of these like double-sided you know it, it, it's uh, identities what <clears throat> luminara um I'm not a fan. I'm not going to lie. I don't... I think... I mean, I think this what is because it, you're a Talzin player, right? Well, it, what it needed, and then it makes it too good, right, but was some, some sort of movement on that second part. Um, but if you give movement on that second part, then it's... Yeah, I mean, you're assuming he's going to be a range four because he's got pistols, but maybe a range five because... There's never any continuity in this I mean, game. Re Rex has range five pistols. That's that's what I was meaning. Um, uh, yeah, I mean it's a very Han, you know, it's a Han centric identity, which is kind of what you would expect. You know, he's not really a team player, is he? Um, yeah. Also, you know, it's really funny. Go on. So you know how Rex has like the two DC seventeens and he's range five with them. Yeah. Yeah, Wolf is range four with his. <laughs> yeah, no, that's what I mean. Like, there's no, <clears throat> no. It's because Rex is that good; he can shoot further. I, uh, you know what it is. Go Wolf's on. missing an eye. He's not got the depth perception for. He hasn't got the shots. depth perception. That's what it is, Quinn. That's what it is. <laughs> Even though um, I know his eye is cybernetic before anyone comments <laughs> it. Um, nine three again, very standard human non-force user. Um. Now, this is an interesting one, whether he's going to be an 8 or a 7. Sorry, an 8 or a 9. 
And I think he's probably going to be an A, but I would really like to see his secondary be a five and the supports be a three. Like, I'd he, like that, I he's think. He's with Rebel Commandos, though, right? You yeah, hope quite that they elite. were pretty good. Yeah, but I mean, can you really make Chewie the same as Rex or the same as, you know... To, Any to of the other fair, four threats? Like, I reckon in a 1v1, Rex absolutely domes Chewie. Have a word. Uh, like, if, if it's up close not, to personal, like, Chewie will rip him in half. But not like, a I'm, chance. I'm gun, but, like, blast a bolt to the back of the head, not not verbal. <laughs> no, I'm not having it. I'm not having it. But let's take a look then at Chewie. Interesting that they call him Chewie. And not Chewbacca. Chewbacca. Like, yeah, weird. I mean, like, I imagine it'll say on the other side of that card, Chewbacca as like the little identity. As thing. the identity thing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, twelve two, which is one. Twelve you... is huge for a secondary. Yeah. Now. Yeah, we know he's definitely a secondary because he comes with the rebel. I was just thinking then, is he? Is, but he is. He's yeah, one hundred percent secondary. Also, like. I mean, he kind of has to be a four, right? Yeah, you have to assume the commandos are a four, minimum. And like, how he is a four feels eight, bad, man. It, it feels perfectly reasonable. Like, no. the the only, what, five cost supports we have are Kalani, who is one of the best secondaries in the game, and then Aurasing, who is one of the worst secondaries in the game. But like, we'll ignore Aurasing because like, she shouldn't be a five, let's be honest. No. And, like, look at Kalani. Like, Kalani's impact is pretty huge. And I know you're <laughs> expecting, you're like, oh, Chewie's great. But... You are right, like, though. Five yeah. is kind of, like, where you end up with, like, those big, big characters. <laughs> I mean, so far, we've had two, and one of them is shocking, so I'm not sure. <laughs> um, so we've got Wookiee Loyalty Quinn. He's got an... Um, uh, tactic there at the start of this unit's activation each character in this unit may dash towards an allied primary character if at the end of its movement this character is within range three of the chosen character that character gains hunker and each character in this unit may recover um it's all right like it's extra movement you're dishing out hunkers which is never bad um as long as they're but not the engaged healing is nice uh, the healing's obviously... really good you can use it on other people around you. It's not just a <clears throat> remove damage or condition kind of thing. Yep, it's not just on yourself. It does affect others as well. Um, it's not wise to upset a Wookiee Queen. It's going to be um, one force. Choose an enemy unit within range three and in line of sight. Roll five attack dice. That the chosen unit suffers one damage for each crit and hit result in the roll. Um this can be a bit like some of the other stuff. Quid. It can be amazing and win you a struggle, or it can whiff and do nothing. On average, you're getting two, and then a 50-50 shot for the for the last one. Um, I mean, it's range three Dark Fury, which is pretty damn good. Which is, yeah, and it's you just get to do it, rather than, you know... Some it also of the other costs ones an entire are... force less than what Dark Fury does, which is insane. Yeah. I know it and doesn't have, no... like, the... Expose the <clears throat> force user kicker, but uh, yeah, getting a range really matter, and the force reduction makes that incredible. I really like this. I really, really like this. Um, bodyguard, primary and secondaries. So applies to himself. We will apply to himself. So he is going to get cover one. Remember, <clears throat> cover from different sources can be stacked as well, um, which is which is nice. So if he's, he would still need, um, it's probably worth exploring this quick, isn't it? So he doesn't need a hunker token to gain cover from this way. But if he was on, uh, if he, if he would get cover from terrain, but he didn't have a hunker token, this doesn't then allow him to get cover from the terrain as well. Um, just, you need the hunker token to get cover from terrain, but it's it's pretty good. Like it's not bad. And I then mean, we've seen it on save before. It's pretty decent. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, we've also got it on the Magna Guard with the first uh, instance of it. Um, yeah, but I was thinking more having it on an actual <coughs> on themselves. Well. Yeah. And then intimidating presence, Quinn. While this unit is not wounded, 
allied rebel alliance characters within two add <laughs> one expertise to their defense roles. Like, I, mean, I have to assume that Chewie is like otherwise terrible defensively, otherwise, he's now unkillable, right? I mean, yeah. You're rolling an additional dice and you are like guaranteeing an expertise to yourself and you've got 12 stamina. Like, his defensive expertise better be like absolute dog shit. <laughs> Who knows? Like, like, he better be rolling like three or four dice at best without the cover. I, I, I can imagine it be four. Four at range, five up close and personal. So, so then it ends up being five, five. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. But, like, adding in an expertise to that is, like, crazy good. And then, like, you factor in it applies to allied, like, allied rebels within two as well. Like, especially you when you've assume, got Luke, Luke in like, there as well and other characters Luke, that have got dice seems like Han is going to have, like, silly defensive expertise because, like, yeah, hey, I'm Han Solo. I'm lucky. Man. I have plot armor, <laughs> except for my son. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, it's. I, I think I think he I think he's pretty good. I, like, I think Chewie's pretty insane, to be honest. Um, again, we'll see what his his combat tree is. We'll see what his stance card is. But overall, pretty pretty solid. Um, kind of rounding out then, Quinn, the Chewie and Han stuff. We've got Never Tell Me the Odds of the third mission pack that we're going to get. It's real interesting, really really interesting. Let me read out the. The little blurbage here, and I do apologise, I'll have to get real close to the screen. But during each struggle, one unit type is challenging the odds as indicated by the active struggle card. So you can see there, Queen, can't you? You've got supporting units, secondary units, you'll have primary as well. Once during your turn, when a character in an allied unit that is challenging the odds wounds an enemy unit, you may spend one force to move the struggle token one space towards your momentum tokens. During the second and third struggles, at the start of each of their turns, players roll one defense dice. Normal, normal stuff. Um, so Quinn, basically, if it's a supporting unit challenging the odds turn, when they wound someone, you can pay a force and you get to move the struggle token once more. Um, Everybody becomes Anakin. And Anakin Which, becomes even more Anakin. And it becomes time. even That's better. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, this they, So a little bit about this. Obviously, first of all, how many active? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're back up to nine um, locations or objectives, but three of them in the middle, which is very interesting. Um, what are your thoughts on this, Queen? What are your thoughts on the challenging the odds part of it? I think it mixes games up. I don't mind it at all, really. Yeah, I feel like this mission pack is going to have a bit more of an impact on the game than, like, Sabotage Showdown did, right? Because Sabotage Showdown was very, very similar to Shifting Odds. Like, the tactic was nice, but only happened when you pulled the Shatter Point, which, you know, you could go an entire struggle and not draw the Shatter Point, right? Like, there could be just yeah. times where it was useless. Um... Also, having the exact same layout on the first struggle every time isn't great. <coughs> uh, yeah, it, mixed, whereas, it, it didn't mix things up much, did it? Yeah. Whereas this one, like, it's got a very interesting shape to it. Um, having five active objectives is less than any we've seen before. Uh, we're assuming that, like, that questionable ropes is like a phase one, right? Well, the, all of these have to be phase one. Because they, they don't, don't have, have the symbols have on them. They don't have the symbols on them. And in struggle two and three, you roll a dice and choose the active objective based on uh, So okay. these are all these are the three phase one cards. That's even more interesting then, because obviously like the, the support one, it's a pretty standard shape. The other ones are a bit more like not not very. They're, they're kind of lopsided in a way, but also like relatively fair. Well, they're a mirror of each other as well, aren't they? Like, yeah. You know, like, <clears throat> what's going to be interesting, Quinn, is, and it's always really difficult to tell because the, the, there is no scale to the pictures, right? We've learned that before. I, much to my chagrin, yes. Can a large base contest? 
that middle back and let's look at the desperate measures one do you think a single character can contest two points there if they're on a big base because it looks like they can uh what is the difference in the no right. they can't so, yeah no because it's five and two up and then five and four in yeah. So that's a difference of what a two and a four, which is three inches and eight inches, five inches. Yeah, so they're not going to be at no, uh, two either then... side. Yeah, yeah. That that's interesting. But then, does that just mean that you never have like more than one of the middle ones lit at once, unless it's the two furthest from each other? Well, it looks there is only one of the. I mean, we we haven't seen the other. Yeah, like that, that's what I'm saying. Like, if the other cards don't have one where you've got like two of those middle ones next to each other lit up, then it's not really a thing to bother with, right? No, it's not. Yeah, you are right. You are right. But interesting. Like, be interesting to see what the struggle two and three cards look like. How far apart are they? How? I mean, I would love one of them to be those middle three lit up, and it's just like fight. <laughs> um. But yeah, I mean, it's look characters and units and squad packs are great, but they're not what for me can at least add a great deal of variety in the game because you're looking to generally do the same things with them, right? You want you want a couple of shoves and some damage or whatever else, but actually, it's the mission packs, um, yeah. and I think this is distinctly different from the other ones, um, and I like that. I, I mean, I'm I glad really that we're finally getting a third one. Um, I mean, what, it'll be a year since the game came out that this comes out, roughly? Yeah, and they did say that this was this is the third of the three, so they'd always pl planned on three mission packs, one in the core box and then the other two. So these were the first three that they designed with the core box, um, kind of, you know, alongside the core box. Yeah, so they've got to the end like... now. It, the, um, these could have come out a bit quicker, in my view. Like, I'd have liked to have seen them a couple of, you know, as you say, this will be a year. June will be a year after the game's release, um, which feels a little bit long, but yeah, it is. It is what it is. Um, but yeah, overall, Quinn, um, happy with it. I, I like yep. the theming of these. You know, we had the Hondo one before. We've now got the Never Tell Me the Odds one, which is obviously. Um, there's a reason why it's not called Never Tell Me the Odds uh, Squad Pack, because that's what I thought it was going to be called. Um, but it's because, obviously, the mission pack is being, is being called that. But um, let's move on to some more Rebels, Quinn, and let's talk about Kanan Jarrus, Spectre 1, and Zeb Aurelius, <laughs> Spectre 4, give over, July 2024. Um, stronger Than Fear Squad Pack. And Quinn... They thrown as a curveball, hadn't they? Because we thought that the Spectre or the Ghost Pack was going to be a single big box, but we now know that that is not the case. We now yeah, know like that the, um, the, the way it was initially kind of shown off, it was all of like the Ghost Squad, like you know, as renders next to each other. But now that we've moved away from renders into actual like you know boxes and painted models, yeah, it's interesting because. As far as I'm aware, these aren't any cheaper, even though you're getting one less model in them. You are getting one less model indeed, indeed. So in this box, we're going to get Kanan, we're going to get Ezra, and we're going to get Zeb. And then in the other box, we're going to have Hera, who will be the other leader, which makes sense, right? Like, Kanan is the spiritual force leader of the group, but actually, Hera's in charge. She's the one that's the higher rank in the, in the Rebel Alliance. Um, and that will also have Sabine... And then Chopper in there as well. But let's take a look at Kanan Jarrus, a.k.a. Spectre 1. Um, he's a 10-3, which is fine. Right? You know, I mean, he's a, a Jedi. Solid. Yeah. Um, a man with two names. At the start of this unit's activation, if an if its active stance is form 2, such form 3, Sorosu, refresh one force, and one character in this unit may recover. If his active stance is pack leader, choose an allied Rebel Alliance character, the chosen character may dash. Then, if the chosen character is a Spectre, one character in this unit may dash. Interesting, we've seen these tactics, Quinn, where depending on what stance you're in, you get to do different things. Um, you know, again, 
We don't know what those stances are. Yeah, um, I mean, the Force Refresh is very interesting on a character that we assume would be an 8. Yeah, like, an 8-3 um, yeah, is kind the, of what you like, expect. Thing is, is he a 3? Because the other characters that have that Force Refresh tactic typically come with less force for what their cost is, on average. But, but... We're talking about Luke and Vader there, right? Luke, Luke Vader and Hondo. Hondo as well. <clears throat> but I think because this is... This is kind of depend... You know, it, It's not a guaranteed thing, is not it? It's not a guaranteed but, thing, but like, it's still pretty damn good if, it is, if he is an 8-3. Like... Yeah. And it's important to note, Quinn, with this, isn't it? It's whatever you start with, you can change your stance mid-activation... But you couldn't go, oh, at the beginning of my turn, I'm going to go from pack leader to Sorosu to get the extra force. The big thing with this one was going to be, how good is Sorosu versus pack leader? And which do you want to be in versus what do you want from this? So that will I mean, really determine how good you this want is. to be in Sorosu because of the defensive properties, right? But then again, as Obi-Wan has proven, apparently Sorosu is worthless defensively. But pack leader could be very very good offensively as well so yeah so i like it so i could still see him being an eight four an eight three uh with this i think i think that's fire cat i don't think you can make him an eight two um i just don't think that I think it works uh force push cost two within three push away three i mean it's solid like i really hope he has on his combat tree the ability to trigger an active ability because that really makes force push very very good when you have that um yeah. but again we'll have to see deflect it does what deflect does and then his identity now i know there's something stronger than fear when an allied rebel alliance unit is wounded by an enemy attack after the effect is resolved one character in this unit may double recover and then jump then if the wounded unit is a specter one character in this unit may make a five dice attack. Doesn't it have to be against the perpetrator. Th that Quinn is mental. Like pretty damn good. That is so good. Um, four shooters: the Jedi, Rebel, Scoundrel, and Spectre. Obviously, um, I'm quite I'm quite pumped for Kane and Quinn. Obviously, we need to see. You know his stance card, but I mean, let, let's be honest, they could have put anything on that card, and he would have been pretty <laughs> pumped for Kanan. The only way I could get more pumped for Kanan is if there's an alternative head option. If you know, you know, but I want me some blind Kanan. Um, yeah, thoughts, Quinn. What What are your thoughts on him? Um, uh, yeah, he's pretty damn good. I mean, as you just alluded to, I also would have preferred blind Kanan. Because I think he's way cooler. He is um, way cooler. Yeah. I mean, I'm glad he's got deflect on his card there because that is like the the very first moment you find out he's actually a Jedi is when he walks out and starts deflecting back at the stormtroopers, right? Yep. Yeah. You don't have anything else to say about it? Not, not really. No. Okay. Right. Well, <laughs> I really like him. Um, I'm I'm very much looking forward to. Uh, to seeing the rest of his uh, cards and the rest of the uh, the rest of the pack, but we do have Zebarelius Spectre Four. Um, question, Quinn: mm. Is Zeb or Ezra the secondary or support? I which hope Ezra's round? the support because it means he's shitter, which he is, and I hate his guts. <laughs> the end. Do you not like new Ezra in Ahsoka? I mean, new as it's cool. It's not what we're getting, though, is it? <laughs> it's not what we're getting, no. We're getting some cheeky, um, wingy Bridger. Like, no thanks. <laughs> let's talk about uh, 9-3. I mean, there's a reason for that, which we'll get to. <laughs> we will get to it, yeah. So, this is going to hurt, pal. It's his first, or his only uh, active ability. Choose an allied Rebel Alliance character in line of sight. One character in this unit may dash towards the chosen character. If the chosen character is a spectre, one character in this unit may advance instead towards the chosen character. After the remove is resolved, if one or more characters in this unit are engaged, this unit immediately makes a focus action. That's pretty good. Like that is that is pretty darn good. And he's got two active two two reactives, Quinn. The Lasan Honor Guard, first of all. 
it's going to be a zero cost, but obviously goes up the more uh, the more wounds he has. When this unit becomes wounded, after the effect is resolved, this unit may use this ability. This unit gains two injured tokens. Then it removes one wounded token, all damage, and one condition from itself. Um, we've seen kind of a variation of this Quinn, haven't we, in with the Gideon, in the Empire yeah. with Gideon. Um, you've played Gideon. How how good is it? I mean, first of all, it's always going to cost a force. So even though it's yeah. a zero cost, it's always going to cost one because you will have a wounded token at the point in which you use this. But um, w what are your thoughts on losing effectively a whole... A, a whole... Um, what's it called? Stamina. Stamina. No, stamina. Durability, stamina. sorry. Durability, yeah. A whole durability to not be wounded. It's a really awkward thing. I mean, obviously, it is very situational because there are going to be times where this is game winning, right? Oh, where absolutely. You, 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 yeah. flip, you choose to flip yourself over and go, yeah, you're not taking this point. There are other situations where this is an absolute death scent because if you use it and then, like, your opponent's next draw is something that can very easily just walk over and hit Zeb and, like, down him, uh, yeah. like, Ze Zeb's gone on his turn. Like, that, that's it. Like, it's over for Zeb. You've maybe got, like, two activations out of him rather than the potential minimum Three. of what? Three, minimum maybe four. four? Yeah. Like, you could potentially half your, like, number of activations. And it's costing you force as well. Like, it, as I said, it's very And I'm going I'm to jump ahead a little bit. Carabast. When he's got one or more injured tokens, you can't choose to reserve him. Mm. Which, you know, it, it doesn't limits what you can do. It's worth noting, though, Queen, I want to just go back to uh, now I know there's something stronger than fear. This would still trigger even if you use the Lasan Honor Guard, wouldn't it? Because it's when it becomes wounded... Yeah, that's the, the he effect is still is wounded resolved. in like, yeah. the process of it. And you would be able to choose which order you did these in as well, which is just an interesting little thing. Could come into it, may not come into much things, but um, it's just something about the feel of their helmets on my fist, which I do like. I do like that all of the abilities are quotes from, from these characters. Cost one, it's reactive. After a character in this unit makes an attack as part of a combat action, this unit may use this ability. One character may make a five dice attack targeting the same enemy unit. We're seeing it more and more units being able to make multiple attacks. Um, it's fine. It's nice, especially when you don't quite get that last point of damage through that you need or you, know, you whiff on a shove or whatever it may be, having a second stab at it is yeah, never he, bad. I mean, he's baby Anakin, right? It's baby Anakin, yeah. It doesn't get anything extra off the back back side of it, but I quite like it. I mean, I have a feeling Zeb is going to be the support unit in this. Uh, yeah, he he's one hundred percent the support unit, even though I don't want him to be. Yeah, yeah. I think it does him dirty by being a support unit, but uh, there we go. Um, let's then take a look at the other pack. Then Quinn make the impossible possible squad pack. Um, so again, we. We thought they were going to be one. They're now two. They're three models in each. They're the same price. So when there's more models, Quinn, the cost goes up. Mm. When there's less models, the cost stays the same. It's funny how that works, isn't it? It really is. It really, really is. So as we mentioned, Hera is going to be the leader of this uh, strike team. Question, Quinn. Obviously, we don't have Hera's card here, but we know Sabine is going to be the secondary Chopper is going to be the, the support. Even though, let's be honest, Chopper should be the primary in this unit. <laughs> no, um, Chopper transcends the hierarchy Chopper of Chopper transcends, he has his Chopper own. Chopper should be a squad in and of himself. <laughs> Maybe even a strike team. Yeah, uh, little murderous bastard that he is. Um, what do we think Hera is going to be? And therefore, what do we think these two are going to be in terms well, of points cost oh i thought you just meant what she was gonna be i was gonna be like oh yeah she's probably a twi'lek she she like, is a, a twi'lek yeah. yeah bit of a thing for kanan 
Um, but yeah, what do you think? Should she bring an eight? Uh, bring an eight. Like, 4-4 four, four seems reasonable for the, like these two, I'd imagine. Um, like, yeah. I'm interested to see what they do in terms of character design for Hera. Uh, in yes. terms of, like, you know, how will she actually, you know, uh, applies herself to a team? Because typically, she sat in the ghost. Well, like, she's she's almost a support, right? She'll bring in the fire support. She'll yeah, do the I mean, extraction. Like, spoiler for later in this video, but we're getting Viz, and we know that they mentioned he can like call in a stroke from the eighty eighty. But can didn't Hera mention potentially anything about yeah do something with the ghost? I mean, it'd be a bit weird if like she can make it shoot when she's not the one piloting it. But I don't know, maybe like yeah. it does feel like she's going to be like kind of a support buff character, right? You would imagine so. Yeah, you would imagine so. Um, so let's have a quick look then at Sabine Wren, Spectre 5. Um, first of all, um, Clan Wren could mean something in the future. Doesn't now. Um, Mandalorian, which is always nice. Uh, Rebel Alliance and Spectre. Uh, Tactical Ability Quinn, my friends, make the impossible possible. At the start of this unit's activation, choose another Rebel Alliance character. The chosen unit may dash. Then, if a chosen character is a Spectre, it may gain a Hunker. Um, I mean, look, these are built to work with each other, Queen Anne, that you can I've got play one them issue with. with this. Go one on. Issue. I, I, I just like two, two words. Two another, words added. Another no. removing. Oh, no. okay. Just after Rebel Alliance there, in bold. I just want uh, all Mandalorian. Yeah. I, I just, you know, like, apes together strong, right? It was like yeah, all the Mandalorians should have, like, some Mandalorian interplayability. And I know she has stuff that, like, makes Mandalorians better, but it's just, you'd like if all the kit worked, Well, right? and the fact that it has to be another Rebel Alliance, at least if it was choose an allied Rebel Alliance character, and you then you play... Sabine as a Mandalorian, at least she can do it to herself. Whereas, yeah. so it really I, I, I almost precludes her from being playing with Mandalorian. Now, it depends what the Mandalorians are going to get in terms of tags, right? But you can't imagine they're going to get Rebel Alliance because they never were. I mean, the only ones that would get it are arguably like Fenrau, like Ursa, like. Like, the Clan Ren guys and, like, the people that show up in Rebels are probably the only Mandos that could possibly get the tag, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. Um, I'm going to add some fireworks to the celebration. Cost one. One character in this unit may choose an active objective within four. Roll five attack dice. Each unit within two of that objective suffers damage for each expertise in the roll. Then one character in this unit may jump. Um, interesting little take on it that it's it's everyone that gets it that's within two, um, but it is only on an expertise, so you're limiting the amount of you know. Well, yeah, because there's going two to expertise get. on every attack die, so you, you you're looking at one to two on average at best. Yeah, right. But if they've got three people on the point. Yeah, the fact that it does damage to everyone within two isn't... I, I wish it didn't say each unit. I wish it said character. Then, this could be a real good support killer. Oh, yeah. Because it is each unit. Yeah. I, I, I missed that one, Quinn. So, yeah. And you get I mean, the... I mean, look. A force for a jump is usually yeah. okay. You think <laughs> of this as a force jump and not as, like, a wrecker-type blow-up an objective then I think this becomes a lot better, right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Important, again, to note that the jump happens after, not beforehand, um, and there is no um, prereq on the objective other than... Um... Oh! It doesn't have to be an active objective. Oh, that, yeah, that's nice. I like that. Because it, so it gives you a lot more options yeah in i mean terms like of... you know if you're just at the start of like a struggle switch and people are crowded over one that is no longer active that can be pretty good oh each unit 
not each enemy unit as okay. Not the more enemy. the more we go back and read this one. It's a bomb. It's not gonna differentiate between friend and foe. I know, I know, but yeah. It look, like you say, Quinn. Um and it is a May, so May choose an objective, so you can do the jump without doing without doing the attack as well, which is which is fine. Um but yeah, I quite, I quite like that. Um, I forged this armor with my family. After this unit makes a move action, it may use this ability. If a character in this unit is within two of an allied Mandalorian or another um, allied Spectre unit, this unit immediately makes a focus action. So this is Mandalorian oh, oh. stronger together. Say it with me, Rich. Go on. Apes together strong. Apes together stronger. Now apes and ghosts together strong. Um... Yeah, I mean, look, we expected her to have something. I like that they've taken it and made it work with the the Spectre as well. Like, makes sense. Um, it's quite good. And then Daughter of Mandalore, characters in this unit have protection and sharpshooter too. Additionally, when a character in this unit would dash, advance, climb, or reposition, it may instead jump. Now, you may be thinking, well, that doesn't, you know, what's the difference? If you were climbing, it's the same as doing a jump. The key differentiator here is you can jump whilst engaged with a non-wounded unit. You can't climb. So it gives her a huge amount of manoeuvrability, Quinn, doesn't it, to get around the board? Um, I mean, even with just, like, the dashes, advances, and repositions, like, elevation can make a massive difference, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So, yeah, overall, Quinn, I like Sabine. Um, yeah, I mean, she's no Bo-Katan. She's no Bo-Katan, no. Um, she Equally, is no Bo-Katan. Stance could be incredible. Like, that sharpshooter could be really, really good. Um, it, well, once again, it's very hard to tell. Um, it is. Yeah, you're only seeing the, half of the overall story, aren't you? The conjunction of sharpshooter 2 with apes together strong, especially with ghosts. Um, like, I mean, plus three dice on her attacks. Like, does that mean that she has very like low base amounts of dice, or is she just a very selfish character that just shoots the crap out of people? Like, well, or do we see a tree that is very back end loaded in terms maybe. of damage and things like that? Which is another way that they balance it, isn't it? You know, she's getting all these extra dice, but. You still need to roll well to get to the end of her tree and do things. Could she have some pushes on some of her expertise as well? Some maybe some other things that she's dishing out. I think could be could be interesting. But again, we only see half of the character. Uh, Murderbot that is Chopper C one ten P Spectre three Mayhem. Choose an enemy unit within two, roll three defense dice if there are any blocks. Block results, the chosen unit gains <laughs> gains strain. If there are any <laughs> if there are any expertise, it gains this arm. And there, if there are any fails, it gains exposed. So it could gain all three quick. I mean, if you have a perfectly average roll, you get one of each, right? <laughs> yep. Um I do like this. It's pretty like, good. I mean, any of those are not bad. I think the expertise for me is probably the the the, the lesser of the three that I would want to dish out. I mean, um, the fail is what you want, right? You want to walk up there, give them the fail, and then just murder them. Yeah. Fail and maybe even strain as well, so yeah. Um, Rocket booster, cost one, get to jump. So again, going back to what, yeah. you know, what Sabine does, like, she gets to do all of that extra stuff as well, so which is really nice. Chopper, sometimes you do it right. When a character in this unit wounds an enemy unit with an attack, after the effect is resolved, this unit may use this ability. Choose an allied Rebel Alliance character within two. The chosen character may dash. If the chosen character is a Spectre, it instead may reposition. Really like that it is a reposition and not an advance, because it means they get the full move. Um... I like that this is a mini version of Vader's find new ways to motivate them. <laughs> like, that's what I'm going to call this from now on, because I like the idea that Chopper just turns around, faces a rebel, and goes, you could be next. <laughs> yeah, I do like it. Um, sturdy construction, Quinn. 
immunity to pin and disarm. And protection. And protection, sorry, yeah, yeah. Not immunity to protection. She has protection and then immunity to pin and, and disarm. No, um, never had protection. <laughs> I quite like that, Quinn. I mean, it's pretty good. Yeah. And then, is that one of ours, while this unit's order card is in the order deck or reserve, characters in this unit cannot be targeted with ranged attacks? Um, we've seen this on the 3 pure. Um, oh, no, sorry, they are two D two one, haven't we? So, yeah. Um, again, it's really difficult to say how yeah. how capable is Chopper going to be at wounding an enemy unit. I, I really he... hope that like the first result on Chopper's tree is like four damage, but then the <laughs> rest of his tree is terrible. <laughs> like I want him to be fully front loaded. Just, he's almost guaranteed to do like three or four damage a swing. I wouldn't or, mind his that. His expertise is just all damage. <laughs> I wouldn't mind that at all. Little murder bot that he is. Um, so yeah, Quinn, they're the cards that we've seen. Um, again, it's a little bit like, yeah, well, we've seen them, but... I mean, we, we've half seen a bunch of characters. Like, Yeah, I'd rather have seen half as many and gone and the full. seen them in full, right? <laughs> yeah. But it is what it is. Expect them very, very soon, because all I mean, of these are coming in in July. July right? So, you know, expect to see the next few transmissions or data bank downloads or whatever they are, yeah. uh, be focused on the ones we've just gone through. And then we do have some others, Quim. So some other units. So um, I'll, I'll let you gush for a while, shall I? I just love me some... I mean, I said from day one, Quim, didn't I? This is the this is the character I want in the game. Um, we were apparently, about Kallus, yeah? Like, obviously, yeah. Some interesting things. Obviously, we've got Thrawn not accepting surrenders. You've got two ISB agents, and then you do have Callus. They said we were going to get some new mechanics with Thrawn, but they didn't elude to what they were. So interesting. I think it'd be interesting if maybe he had like more cards to put in the deck, like the Ewoks, right? Like, yeah. I mean that that would. I mean, but is that a new mechanic? Like. I mean, and they they did say actually they did they did explicitly say expanding on what we've seen with the Ewoks. I have an idea. Go on, enemy deck. Oh, Braun has laid several traps for you, my oh, friend. I like that a lot. Um, and then Callus. We do know that he is going to have multiple tags and there's going to be something that you do at the beginning of the game where you choose the tags that he has, basically switching allegiances um, as he does, backs and forth between Empire and Rebels. Um, it looked like you had a little, an extra little thought there on Throne, Quinn. Well, I was, I was just thinking, you could have a really horrible card that would just skip your go. Like, uh, it'd, it'd have to be once per game. It but would have to be like, a burn burn once done, right? Like, Yeah, but, like, what if it costs, like, two or three force on Thrawn's part to put that in the enemy deck? And you just I go, still think yeah, it's worth that, it. That, that bomb's in there now. Like, Or maybe, maybe, maybe it's just part of his package. And, you know, he's an eight, he brings eight, and he's not as good... In combat and things, I mean, this guy in, up close and personal, you know, he's like, trained yeah, like, like close combat. He should actually like he should kick ass. Like, yeah, I, mean, how I would imagine close combat, pretty good. Maybe sharpshooter one, um, or because he's pretty good with a with a with a pistol as well. But um, yeah, I love me some th love me some Thrawn. Um, they have very much said as well that this is Rebels era th Thrawn, yeah. as in the TV show, which makes sense. I like that Kalos, you're going to be able to use him in different places. He's obviously got yeah, the... You choose what like kind of allegiance he has in the beginning, yeah. right? They they talked something about Kalos's alternative... And I can't remember if they definitely said he has an alternative head. But obviously when he starts... Well, um, he's going to have his hat on, right? Silly hat. Well, no, he doesn't in this picture, right? What, he's got the he's got in the art in the artwork he has, but then he's got like the season one Game of Thrones Jamie Lannister locks, hasn't he? Once he joins the Rebel Alliance, 
Um, I mean, in he Rebels. also has an entirely different outfit when he actually joins the Rebels. Like He does, yeah. So be interesting to see if you get options for him so that if you are more of a Rebel player, then you can put him in, you know, in the Rebel team. But I do like that. Um, we then have Quinn... Good soldiers follow orders. Good soldiers. Good soldiers, even. How? How does it get? Good sliders? Good sliders follow orders. Good sliders. Um, we that... spoke about this a lot, Quinn, didn't we, on the Bad Batch? Like, why yeah. is Crosshair not Galactic Republic? Well, Galactic this Empire. is why. Galactic Empire, sorry. This is why. Um, so this is a crosshairs led storm. Uh, are they clones or stormtroopers? Clones? Uh, no, they're they're the first TK troopers, right? Ah, okay. Because the, these are like the actual like normal citizens they've recruited, but they're using the clone armor the, in like uh, an interim period. Okay, okay, interesting. Um, first of all, excuse me. I uh, love the crosshair pose, yeah. like. So so good. Um, they talked a lot about how how good he was as a leader. It'd be really interesting. Obviously, the secondary unit Quinn is going to be a flame trooper, Mr. Mr. Flamethrower. Yeah. Now they did say that it caused them problems in playtesting. How do you represent this? You know, there are no templates in this game, yeah. right? To 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 show a flame. So it's going to be really interesting. Could we be seeing our first? beam attack in this game where oh, I, I don't think you can get away with a beam and shot up can you I don't I, know I think but is he only rolling akin... four dice or something like that on each attack I, I like... think it'll be more akin to like he will have a reactive ability that is free initially that lets him like attack another enemy within two of the initial target mm, just because it's, it's the fire like spreading over them but like Maybe he's like the first range three like attacker. We thought. I think he's a range three, right? Like he's definitely a range three. Um, yeah. Does a for, so for anyone that doesn't know, maybe you've you, if you've never played MCP, obviously you have the the range rulers. Uh, so one through well two through five because one is all of them, um, and some characters in Marvel Crisis Protocol have what's called a beam attack. So rather than just targeting one character within range X, that's the range of your ability, um, you can place down the actual ruler itself or the, the tool itself and every character, including your own, get hit by that attack. Um, and you roll individual attacks for each of them. But I think that is what they went with first. Yeah. Because that would have been where they started off. Maybe it was too good. But I also could see that maybe this character can shoot normally even whilst engaged because let's face it, flamethrowers don't really like you know. Oh, they don't care, right? Like yeah. that is his ranged and melee weapon, right? They don't. And like, it's, don't it's like when he's using it in melee, it's not going to spill over and burn someone else, right? Yeah. Or I mean, they don't. You know, they don't have an incinerate condition, do they? On this, but you know, other characters within range two of the target character. If if we did have incinerate, like roll one yeah. fewer die. Like I don't know. Like there's. I mean, there's... if they really wanted to, they could introduce a new condition with this pack. Like it's been done before on MCP. It has been done before with MCP, right? We only have four special conditions in this game. Um, but I do feel like, I mean, is could could would it be expose? Is that not just the equivalent? Is it? I, I think it'd be really interesting to have just a one for one translation of incinerate of just whilst you have this minus one condition, I, yeah. minus, minus one defense dice. Minus rather. one defense I think that'd dice. be really interesting. Yeah. Um, very, yeah, and, very and then we've got like the, the other two plebs, and as, as far as I can recall. Old flamethrower boy is the guy that Crosshair murders, right? I think so. Yeah, I on think his way he's out, the guy he just shoots in the chest because he's not following orders. Well, um, good, good soldiers should always follow orders, Quinn. I, I know. Well, he's a very bad soldier. Clearly, he is. He is the worst solider. <laughs> really, hopes um, why Crosshair is killed him. Responsible for the proofreading, got a bollocking <laughs> for that. Like, I really hope so. 
Uh, I, really I, I can imagine, so. like, Crosshair himself, very selfish as a primary, just is very good at killing. Oh, me, 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 me. Could we see our first Sharpshooter 3 character? You know what would be cool? Because I, I very much think that this Crosshair is going to, like, bounce shots through people, right? Oh. Like, I think that's his thing. Like, I think this is the crosshair that throws out the little mirrors and, like, you know, pings a shot off and it bounces through, like, four different people. What if every time he, like, bounced to another person, like, his dice pool degraded by, like, two? So you take oh. the focus with him, you get that sharpshooter three, so he's on four extra dice, then he's on two extra dice, then he's on no extra dice... And, like, maybe it just dwindles down until there's no more dice. Do, do you think, then, as part of his expertise, he'll have to roll X number of expertise to be able to get that second shot off? I mean, I, I think it could be, like... It, it, it's weird, but I feel like it could be a reactive active ability, which is, I know, a very strange thing, but I think it could be an active ability on the tree that is triggered in reaction to him finishing an attack, right? Which I know is a weird thing in terms of the rules, but just because then it allows you to trigger it from the combat tree, because you can't really trigger a reactor from the combat tree at present. No, it's not It's not possible, yeah. I mean, or, <clears throat> or you have it as an innate, and it's after this... After this unit makes an attack as part of a combat action, if he rolled, uh, if he rolled um, two or more expertise, mm. you may make a follow-up attack to any unit within range three of the initial target or something like that. I, I, then, like a clause of then, after that attack is resolved, if he rolled four expertise or more. Do it again. You get to do it again. Yeah, something like that. Or maybe it's one and then two. Yeah. I I think, yeah, I mean, that could be amazing. Maybe maybe we are just um, nah, love, like, loving Crosshair a bit cr too much. Crosshair's the coolest one. <laughs> like, he has to be the best. But I do like that. Well, spoiler alert, like, if you haven't seen any of Bad Batch turn off now, but well, if it, it doesn't matter whether you've seen any or not. Quinn, our prediction is... Crosshair is the last one standing, right? Like, he, he is 100% the last man standing at is, the end of like, that him and, series. Him and Omega, um, Omega. Will, be, will, will be the last two standing. We, 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 we predict, anyway. Um, Quinn, let's just skip through the next one. Nobody gives a shit about Mandalorians, right? I, mean, <laughs> I, I care about two of these characters. Two of them I fucking hate. Um, I mean, which two do you hate? Which two do you care about? It's divided left and right. Oh... Go ahead. I mean, look, I, we've I, got two. I, I hate the sculpts for these children of the watch. They are awful. <sighs> I, I, like, I get what they're going for, but also, like, can we keep the, like the silly rockets to action figures, please? Yeah, it does I, look it, a bit. It just doesn't look good. It does look a bit meh. Let's talk about the armorer and Paz Vizsla, though. Um, yeah. Paz Vizsla's a big old boy, isn't he? He's a big fella. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, is that a 50 mil? It is, yeah. Mm. So, wait a minute, so Paz Fuck you, Vizsla Chewbacca! Gets... <laughs> Paz Vizsla gets a 50 mil, Chewbacca doesn't. Okay. Makes perfect sense, yeah. Um, so this is the way squad pack, Quinn. Q4, so still by the end of this year. Um, I mean, this is what we've been wanting, right? A Mandalorian yeah. squad pack. We spoke about it many, many times on many videos. Again, Apologies for the noise if you can hear it, but we spoke about them many, many times before. Um, this, this, it makes sense for me, Quinn, to start with this squad pack before you get into some of the other, you know, maybe we get some of the other Vizslas could be on the horizon. Um, Please, AMG, I know I bully you a lot, but give me pre Vizsla. <laughs> He's you know, really cool. With a light <laughs> with a dark saber. You yeah. Know? He should have been in the game before Gideon. Canonical first appearance of <laughs> the Dark Saber. He needs to be the one with the Dark Saber in the game first. That is Man. fair. That is fair. Um, yeah, I'm. The armor is a little bit monopose for me. Uh. Like they've gone really over the top with the Children of the Watch. I 
pre Paz Vizsla is perfect as far yeah, as I'm that, concerned. That is what Paz Vizsla looks like. Like even if she'd have had like even if she was holding the I mean, hammer, hammer like, up, like tongues out and in front, tongues I down. Think, there you go. Right, that's like, your pose. It's very monopose. Um, I, either that or like you know, kind of Anubis style across the chest, oh, kind of holding yeah. both. I think yeah, that would have been, cool. been quite good, but. Yeah, so a little bit monopause, but again, the more nothing. Like it, the more like the the female member of the watch like grows on me, like that one isn't as terrible, but good god, is Jetpack Man bad? Yeah, I'm not a big fan of Jetpack Man. It's of it is that one scene, isn't it, where they all and Jeez. is it off episode three? I think, or, sorry, season three, where they're all attacking that big alligator esque type thing. But yeah, um. I mean, look, I'll be picking it up, Quinn. No matter what, like I'll be, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be getting this. Um, let's have a look. Probably, I'm going to say, Quinn, the next one is probably my favourite reveal because okay. we knew about the other thing. Right? We knew that Ghost was, you know, we knew that the Ghost Squad was coming. We knew that Thrawn was coming because we got a little artwork teaser of him at the last Minister of Um I like this next pack because it does two things first of all it brings some amazing characters in the game that i want but it shows that they are not just going to do the squad packs moving forward which i think sets a really nice precedent and that is we don't need their scum unit pack so obviously four characters who probably had maybe five minutes of screen time between them in the in, in the do original the, do any of them ever speak <clears throat> um, Django does. Ja Jan where's Django? Uh, sorry, uh, Boba does, but the others, I don't think so. No. Um, can you name them all, Quinn? Dengar, Boss Guy, G88, Boba Fett. Okay, that's good. Fair, fair. Mate, um, I, I was like a proper Star Wars kid. Don't you worry. Like, fair enough. I, um, I, I can tell you the name of the guy who Obi Wan cuts the arm off in the cantina. He <laughs> doesn't like you. <laughs> yeah, he's um, Mother and he's a spider person, which is why he bleeds when he yeah, gets he cut bleeds. by the lightsaber. Yeah, uh, and then Doctor. Oh, what's the guy that's with him? Everzans. Everzans. Cor that's the one. Yeah. Cornelius Everzans. Cornelius Everzans. Um, so interesting, Quinn. This is a unit pack. Every single one of these characters are a secondary which i like i don't like because they're secondaries right i'm not too bothered about that but i like, you the like fact because that it breaks the mold it breaks the mold absolutely um i mean i've loved i love me some bosk that pose i'm really intrigued is identical to star wars legion for boba fett it yeah i like of all of these bosk is very clearly the best sculpt right Oh, without a shadow hey, of a doubt. He's real good. Um, yeah, I really don't like that bone pose at all. It's identical. I, let me let no, me go and grab it. It's slightly my, different uh, because let me go and um, grab this I, I realized I still had this the other day. But I, I mean, I I know it's not this, identical because he's holding his main blaster I mean, forward. Because this is he holds his main blaster forward in it, Legion though. Uh, Legion, yeah, like it's it's okay. There might be some slight. He's facing the other way. Yeah, but, but also like he the main like his proper like rifle blaster is the one he's like aiming forward, right? Yes. Yeah, in this he's not. In this he's got a weird little pistol out. I know, but is it not the same sculpt? Pretty much. I mean like, it's very similar and I'm not overly fond of it. Yeah, I'm I'm like, not I'm not a big big I, fan I of it. it. I mean, let's be honest, there are gonna be loads of 3D Prince of Boba Fett out there. There already are, really so uh, yeah. Um, I like Dengar's sculpt. Why did they make him look like Robert Baratheon after the war, and when he was being sat on the Iron Throne for I mean, a good? A good... Dengar is like pretty bulky. I know, but they made him look fat in this. Like, I mean, like, at least he doesn't look like he's got loo roll on his head like he does in the film. That is true. That is true. Um, Ig eighty eight. Like, it's a pretty. Pretty standard pose. Like whenever remind you imagine an IG droid, you imagine them like that. So remind me again what IG 11s model looks like. Um, let me have a quick look. Is IG it exactly the same as this one? No, it's different. He has like 
he has one gun up in the air, like he's holding it with his arm at a 90 degree angle. I believe. No, he, he's shooting behind him, is what he's doing. The the art is a gun up in the air. The model, he's shooting behind him with one of his guns. Ah, uh, okay. I mean, like, it, it's cool. It, it's still not as good as Bosk. Like, no, I mean, Bosk, Bosk wins out of this. Like, absolute, just primal rage. Um, are we going to see a regeneration ability on Bosk? Is that something that you think we could see? I mean, see assumedly, him? he has a tactic where he just heals at the start of his go, right? I'd imagine so. Like, I, I think that's just kind of it. Like, probably he gets to dash towards an enemy... Uh, primary or secondary, if it has the Wookiee targets in advance. Yeah, maybe hate, you know, some form of hatred for Wookiee. Like, yeah, maybe. Um, could be interesting, but yeah, I mean, look, I like these, like, they're, they're some of my, you know, scum villainy bounty hunters are some of my favourite characters in, in Star Wars. Having a, again, Quinn, having a pack that is just breaking the mould is nice because it means that they can do things in in the future and just imagine Django sorry Django just imagine uh, Jabba being able to take any three of these as his units yeah but I, I wanted Jabba to come with like Bosk and Boba and his identity be oh you can include a secondary instead of a support unit also question AMG where are four Lomans Lucas <laughs> they, they were in that scene as well we didn't yeah, forget they... Most people do. Um, could Jabba be a single model pack? I mean, I mean, you, you kind of like you, you'd assume Bib Fortuna as well, right? No. no. I mean, what's Bib Fortuna bringing to a battle? Like, Dewan uh, Ewanga. Dewan Ewanga. I mean, he was swiftly dealt with by uh, old, old, old man Fett, wasn't he? So, um. Yeah, look, I like this Quinn. Like I said, I love the characters, uh, but for me, it's more about the fact that they've yeah, broken the mold. I, I also care more about the precedence it sets. Like yeah, the only one I really like for there is Boss. Boss looks amazing. Yeah, like really, really good. Um, maximum firepower squad pack Quinn. We already alluded to this. Obviously, moving into Empire, um, you know, we kind of been very Endor focused, haven't we, up until now with what we've seen when it comes to. Galactic Republic, um, or Galactic Empire even. Now they did say, obviously, those four bounty hunters, all from Empire. Maximum Firepower Squad, all from Empire as well. Um, and Quinn, you sort of already alluded to what Veers is going to bring. He's going to be very much sitting on the back lines, calling in bombardments from his at -80s. Even though they're off-field, you can't see them. It doesn't really matter. We've got three stormtroopers, sorry, three snowtroopers, one of them a sergeant, the one in the middle there will be the secondary. Um, I think Veers could bring a really, really nice different type of style and play versus what we get, what we've had up until now, which be, has been very much what I call field leaders, but out the front, fighting themselves, doing their own dirty work. Um, I think Veers is really going to be a support primary unit that we haven't really seen before. I don't know if you agree or disagree. Yeah, like, I, I imagine that the way he calls in the 8080s is, like, kind of like one of the pick an active objectives, make it blow up. I mean, that's kind of the ability I'm envisioning. I'm, in, I'm imagining a higher cost, but also a higher dice pool with decent yes. odds on each die. Yeah. Like, because it is an 8080 after all. Yeah, maybe some form of blast on there as well, so everyone within range two of a target takes yeah. damage, or as you say, you pick an objective and that's what you know. That's what you target. Um, friendly fire, I'd imagine, is potential within. I mean, you know, it, within it's there. the imperial way, right? Absolutely. So I do like this. Um, whilst I know it's monopause, but the the via sculpt for me is perfect. Like that's because that's. Like, it's what he looks like, isn't it? it he's, he stood there. He isn't running up and attacking someone with a hammer and tongs or anything. But like, I mean, I, I, could, I could see there being an arm option for him to be like pointing, like he is in the a arm. bit like the artwork. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree, and I think you could make it very, very easily. You know, just that left arm 
His face is still pointing in the same direction. Wouldn't mind that. Um, but yeah, it's going to be interesting. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what they do to really differentiate snow troopers. Yeah. Because like, you know, they're designed, whereas the stormtroopers are the, you know, generic will work anywhere. The snow troopers very much like are designed to work in that sort of difficult I mean, I already Maybe have like scale. one idea for them, but like changes them to be like climac like climatized, which is they're immune to pin. Yeah, that could be fair. Immune to pin or or they have scale as well. Could be another way to sort of show how they work through difficult terrain, that kind of thing. But um yeah, I'm interested in it. Again, to your point, Quinn, it's nice to see some new um empire leaders to work alongside. Yeah. Um you know, so you don't just have those two, you know, the Gideon and the um and the Vader. So it'll be nice to get some I mean, some different ones. I am an Empire player, mainly because they made Republic barely playable. Um one thing I'm surprised by is like we've seen very little in the way of rebellion stuff at the minute. Like it, it feels a bit weird. Like there, there's not a lot going on for them. Well, I mean, I think they're considering the rebels to be part of the big rebellion. The rebellion thing, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, but um, like, I feel like you know, kind of like Han and his box are kind of associated with that whole Endor Return of the Jedi wave, right? Yeah. Like, we've not seen anything else to kind of like comment. I mean. Give us Saw Guerrero and two tubes, IMG. Oh, like, Saw Guerrero is a great shout. I mean, very, he's very good. The shout. best rebel. Like, yeah. Speaking of rebels, Quinn, because um, he is going to be another rebel leader. What have we here, Squad Pack? Uh, <sighs> I mean, is he going to be a rebel? Well, he's going to have. A a snapshot. He's not part of the rebellion in this, is he? He's going to have changing allegiances, a little bit like Callus. Um, so he's going to have multiple allegiances that he can work with, um, which I imagine then trickle down and filter into Lobot and the Cloud Guards. I, don't, I can never remember their names, but... Bespin Guard, maybe? Bespin Guard, I think it is, yeah. Um, I, I do like how that one Bespin Guard looks like he's just trying to like cosplay Lando. It just a little bit, doesn't it? He's yeah. got the stash. He just really like, yeah, you know, he really likes his boss. Well, and then neither of them <laughs> neither of the models shown are the artwork of the cloud guard. <laughs> uh, no, gonna... all right. Pardon? They are. Right. The, Look the at the best thing guard. Is a bit weird on the models, I think. He doesn't have a mustache, does he? It's a very blurry picture, but I think he does. Okay, maybe he does then. Maybe he does, but... Yeah, I mean... Lando's I, I, never I, been I, my favourite character. Like, I do love Lobot. Like, I, I could not give a flying fuck about Lobot. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it'd be interesting to see what they bring. Again, I'd imagine a lot of deception, a lot of... Maybe another character who has cards, extra cards that he can put places but Q4 we will we will wait we'll wait and see Quinn with with bated breath no um, let's talk about some Jedi's Quinn requesting <gasps> your surrender um, so Kit Fisto and then I always forget the name of the Padawan now Jedi same race as Admiral Akbar, but I forget the name of him it's can you Dave, remember the name mate. Dave. Yeah, Dave. Let well, me check this. well, let me check it now, and it'll be weirdly close to Dave. N N Nadar Veb. Nadar Veb, and he's close a Mon enough Calamari. To for my liking. Yeah, Mon Calamari. Um, look, more Jedi's, uh, more Padawans. Like, I, you know, I hate this kid, Fisto does. I'm really not a fan. I really wanted like that iconic shot of him with the with the two lightsabers out in front of him. Yeah. Why it's so easy to do when they've chosen whatever the fuck this is. Why he's only got a single lightsaber as well. Like yeah. so Me. Yeah. Interesting. It'll be interesting to see. I don't think we found out it's either this one or the next pack. I think it's the next pack. Um, so we don't know who the supports are going to be in this one, but we Uber do troopers. know. Pardon? Scuba troopers. 
Scuba Troopers. Yeah, maybe. Mm. We do know that in this one, the Wisdom of the Council Park, we are going to get generic Padawans, which is interesting. Uh, that will be the support unit. So we are getting to the point of being able to run a full Sabre team. They spoke about how they will have different head options and those sorts of things. Um, Quinn, I've had a mind fart as to which the names of these characters. Yeah, Mundi. There we go. Um, what about the droid attack on the Wookiees? Ooh. Yeah. I am really mad about this pack. Why are you mad? Because I wanted Kiari Mundi to come with Bakara and the Galactic Marines. That would have been good. I think that would have been a great pack. Yeah, but no, that would have been, we get that this thing. Good. You get more Jedi, you get all more Padawans. Yeah. Like, I it's. Don't care. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, is that they're still supports, right? So they're going to have to. <laughs> they're going to have to pull their way, and because they're Republic characters, they're not going to. Yeah, so it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. And then rounding it out, Quinn, we do have the timeline. Um, I mean, look, ne next thing coming up is going to be um, the the hand stuff, isn't it? Oh, no, sorry. You know, um, yeah, Han, Iden, yeah, Squad Pack. Yeah, Han, IG, uh, sorry, uh, Iden Versio. Stronger Than Fear coming in July. Never tell me the odd mission. Strange that the... the Mission pack isn't coming in June alongside. All right, man. Alongside that. Um, uh, that feels backwards. I think I think they might have screwed that up, honestly. Maybe, maybe. Um, only one actual pack for July, only one for August, which again, Quinn, they're not there's nothing in September there as well, which is also Q3. Um, you could imagine that they will. Things will get moved around, and is September Q three? Oh, yeah, yeah I October, always, November, I always, December. I always uh... forget October exists. Of course you do. I mean, um, it's a well known fact on the channel, but me and the months do not get on. It doesn't do very well with months. No, it doesn't do very well at all. But um, yeah, there we go, guys. Um, it, it's hard to get as excited, Quinn, about the Shatterpoint stuff as we got with the MCP stuff because we saw, you know, you see every, you know, minus some tactics cards, like you get a full idea of the character, but you don't with these reveals. Um, yeah. I, I really hope that like AMG kind of buck up their ideas with how they do shadow point reveals like this. They need this to show us the stance card as well. As yeah. Part of it. And it needs to be both sides if they're double sided. If you're listening, AMG, please. Yeah, because otherwise you don't get a full idea of the character, yeah, do you? Like, you, like, it's you not... can't really get as hype about a thing if you don't know enough about it, right? Yeah. No. Absolutely. Absolutely. But oh, look, it's it's interesting. Um, obviously, they they're dipping more into the original trilogy, uh, which I think. Yay. But I actually think when it will boost the popularity of the game as uh, well. I think it will. Um... Um, I mean, I, to be honest, I don't know why I'm being, like, meh about it. Honestly, I'd rather kept away from the prequels as much as possible until they learn how to make clones not shit. <laughs> Some clones are good. Bad Batch well, are good. I can count them on one hand. Bad Batch are good. Um, but yeah, so there we go, guys. Let us know what you think down in the comment section below. Which, which of the characters, the individual character revealed... Are you most excited about Quinn? As we did before, I'll ask you the same question. What's the one character from everything we've seen that you are the most excited about? Crosshair, obviously. See, absolute Chad. I'm probably going to have to go through. I, um, I mean, we all knew but that it's, was the it's, answer. But it's been the character that I've been wanting from the most part. But outside of my most favourite, probably the, the the pack I'm most excited about is definitely. The uh, the bounty hunter pack, um, with all the different bounty hunters in there. I think that's going to be very very good indeed. Guys, we're going to leave it there. Let us know what you think down in the comment section below. Does all these um, original trilogy stuff make you more excited for Legion, or are you like Quinn and just thinks that everyone that likes the original trilogy is indeed a boomer? Let us know. I, mean, down I don't in know the what it makes them below. more excited for Legion, but sure. Uh, sorry. Shatterpoint, even. Dearie me. Dear no one's excited for Legion. 
no one's excited for Legion. Um, guys, uh, if you could um, do a drop a like, do a like, do a like, and do a subscribe, all that usual stuff. Uh, it really, really does help the channel out. If you want to help us even further, do 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 comments, do 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 writing good. Um, if you you know, it really, really does help out the channel. If you want to support us even further, we do have our Patreon and the YouTube membership open as well. Head on over to Discord. You can go and check out everything that we do on there, plus announcements of all of our upcoming events. And as always, guys, it leaves me with just enough time to say stay well, keep safe, and until next time, may the force be with you. Good soldiers follow orders. They do indeed follow orders. Welcome to our